Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Antonov2 as usual and today we've got a review of a really really interesting machine coming up. This is the A43 tier uh, 6 Russian medium tank it's situated right here after the T-34 and this is the tier at which you have to decide whether you want to go down the line of the A43 or down the line of the T-34-85 and most people seem to choose the T-34-85 line, which I really cannot understand because according to my opinion, the tanks of this line here are worse across the board, maybe except for Tier 6, but we're going to look at that in depth a bit later. Basically, uh, this tank is very similar to the American M4A3 E8, but it trades a lot of gun depression for quite a bit more maneuverability. Now, the stats are very interesting, and when I first looked at this tank, I thought it would be a pile of shit, basically. But I must say that I was really enjoying this vehicle, and I will be quite sad to sell it, although lately I haven't been performing it as well as at the beginning, but still, I really like this machine, and I can really recommend it. So that's check out why. First of all, it's got 730 hit points, which is not a lot, but for a tier 6 tank, it's alright. Uh, as a medium tank, you know, you do not really expect to have that much health, and 730 is alright. You can take a few hits. At tier 7, that will be enough to take up to 4 hits, really, which is quite good. It's very light, weighing only 27 tons, so you really should not be ramming enemy vehicles except for light tanks or very light artillery, but even when you're ramming artillery you have to watch out at tier 6. Also it's got a very very powerful engine of 600 horsepower, uh, which allows it to achieve a power to weight ratio of 22.05 which is very good, and that is a lot better than the 17.21 that the Sherman Easy 8 gets. And that means that this tank is really, really speedy and maneuverable. It also gets a 55 kph speed limit and a 44 degrees traverse speed. Now, this is really, really good news. This tank is very, very quick. It's quicker than many light tanks. And for example, if we compare that power to weight ratio to, say, the power to weight ratio for Leopard 1, we can see that the A43 actually gets better power to weight ratio. It uh, gets, let's see, Yes, it gets better power to weight ratio than the WZ-132, and it also gets better, uh, no, it doesn't get better power to weight ratio than the AMX-3090, but still, the power to weight ratio is really, really good, it's got one of the best PWRs in the game. And the turret turns at 48 degrees per second, which is really fast as well, and combined with a good top speed limit and good traverse speed means that this tank is really maneuverable, and is basically ideal for performing flanking or carousel maneuvers. But the good speed comes at a price because you've got really, really poor armour. You've only got 60mm at the front of the hull, 45 at the sides and 40 at the rear. And the turret gets 75 all round which is not very good. And basically even at the gun mantle, 80 or 90mm penetrating shots will be able to go through this. And yeah, you might say it's angled but it's not really going to help all that much and even if you angle your tank like this anything at tier 6 will be able to penetrate you. For tier 5 tanks, some tier 5 tanks will have problems but generally everything will be able to penetrate you that you meet on the battlefield. Next we'll talk about the guns and the gun selection is really interesting on this vehicle. Now basically it gets exactly the same gun selection as the T-34 it gets the choice between a 57mm and a 76mm and well with the T-34 the choice of gun was actually quite clear because the 57mm Zis4 just performed so much better than the 76 but with the A43 the 76mm gun performs a lot better than on the T-34 so the choice is not that clear anymore so we'll quickly compare the two guns. So on the left side we've got the 76mm and on the right side we've got the 57mm gun. Now the rate of fire is a lot better on the 57mm gun, it's 26.09 which is just ridiculously fast. But it's still very good on the 76, 18.18. The difference is quite a lot, but the rate of fire is very good on both guns. Now interestingly the penetration 
is better on the 76mm gun. On the T-34, the penetration was better with the 57, but here, the penetration of the 76mm gun is better. The damage is also a lot better at 115, rather than only 85, but the accuracy is a lot worse, and the aiming time is exactly the same. Judging from the stats, you would really think that the 76mm gun is better, because it gets better penetration, better damage, and the aiming time is exactly the same, so the only drawbacks of the 76 really are rate of fire and accuracy, and the rate of fire still is really really good. And I must say that with a 76mm gun, in lots of situations where you for example are only able to get one shot off before the enemy retreats, uh, it will perform better, but I've personally made the experience that for me the 57mm gun is the better choice because I just think that it fits the way this tank is played better. And really, I think that the 76mm gun is better, but somehow I seem to perform a lot better with the 57 and uh, that's why this is the gun for me and I've been trying to play this tank with the 76 a lot because I just wanted to get some footage to show you but I haven't had a single good game while I've had loads of good games with the 57mm gun and that's why for me the 57mm is the choice that I prefer. The DPM also is a lot better than the 57 because it's 2217 and if we mount the 76mm gun it's only 2091 so it's nearly 200 less and that will make quite a difference and I think that because of the way you play this tank which is you can try to loop round and flank and outmaneuver your enemies and try to get out their rears and sides the penetration doesn't really matter all that much and the better rate of fire and higher DPM really means that I seem to be able to just put out more damage with a 57mm gun and also it seems that uh, the accuracy is quite important too because with 0.34 accuracy rather than 0.41 uh, you often find yourself in situations where you have to take long range shots as you will see in the gameplay later on and I really find that uh, the accuracy is quite important so for me that's why I chose the uh, 57 millimeter gun but if you want to choose the 76 that's a totally viable decision and actually many people argue that it's the better gun and judging from the stats it is but as I said for me the 57 just perform better but basically I would just try out both guns as you should have both of them researched anyway when you get the tank and uh, just make up your mind but as I said generally I think the 57 is just better somehow i don't really know why but i think it's the combination of better rate of fire and accuracy now if we look at the research tree actually the grind on the a43 is really easy because you've got uh, the radio researched and you've already got the two top guns so you can mount the radio and the gun that you prefer straight away after that i definitely go for the engine as it boosts your uh, engine power 100 horsepower which is quite good so get the engine after that then unlock the suspension for better maneuverability and after that get the turret because it just gives you more armor more view range and a better reload on the guns also another kind of letdown with the upgraded turret and this is not a problem that you have with the stock turret is that you've got this massive cupola on the top of the tank and that can be a real bother if you are trying to poke ridge lines and basically you will not even be able to see the enemy tank and they will be able to snipe your cupola so you really have to use your speed and maneuverability to uh, move backwards and forwards basically and make it really difficult for your enemies to hit this cupola interestingly though uh, parts of this cupola are the most heavily armored parts of the whole tank i'm talking about these kind of rings here because they can uh, be up to 120 millimeters strong so you really have to watch out when firing at those because some shots of lower tier tanks will bounce but generally you will hit the cupola if you hit it square on and that can be quite a problem and you don't have that problem with the stock turret but still i think the upgraded turret is better just because it gives you benefits like better view range and so on talking of view range you get 360 meters of it which is very good at tier 6 it's average basically and uh, yeah that will allow you to actually pull off some spotting in tier 6 games and actually sometimes even function as a scout 
Also, your signal range is, well, it's not all that good, really. Some tanks at tier 6 already get tier 10 radios, like, for example, the Japanese mediums. But still, 525 is kind of sufficient at tier 6. And you will not really break off contact to your allies all that often. Yeah, uh, for tactics, I kind of talked about them already, but I'm just going to emphasize it again. This is a very fast flanking tank and kind of circling dogfighter and you play it very similarly like a T-34 only it's just even better and if you like the T-34 you're going to like this tank too because well basically you've got two kind of different playstyles in it and it depends on what gun you use because if you use the 76mm gun you're kind of limited to brawling while with the 57mm gun you can also pull up some sniping and supporting fire which is what I like to do in this tank with the 57mm uh, but still with the 57mm this tank is an excellent dogfighter because it has just got so much versatility and uh, you know you, if you miss a shot it doesn't matter because you've reloaded within two seconds and put in another shot and if you get round the rear of your enemy and basically for example they are distracted then you can just really really hurt them with that gun and it's basically like you've got an auto loader that never has to reload its clip and that is just really amazing and if you can get this tank round the flanks, round the sides and rears of your enemies, then you've just basically won. But with the 57mm, as I said, you can also use this tank as kind of a supporting vehicle. But you have to be careful because your, your penetration is not all that good. Now you have to always watch out because you haven't got any arm and you cannot really rely on bouncing any shots. And sometimes you can even use this tank as a scout because it's got the maneuverability to do the job really. And if your team runs out of light tanks to do it, then you can really take over that job. But remember that you do not keep your camouflage values while you're on the move because you're a medium tank. And for that reason, I would prefer passive scouting to active scouting in this vehicle. As for equipment, the choice is quite clear. I put a camo net on because I had one spare, but you shouldn't really do that. You should get vents, the gun lane drive, and the tank gun rammer. Now, with a gun lane drive, it's kind of a bit controversial because you've got 1.9 seconds aiming time, which is not that much really, so you will hardly realize the difference. And you don't really need it either. So if you want to, you could swap the GLD for coated optics or binox. Uh, if you, you want to use this tank as a kind of a scout, which is an absolutely viable choice. As for crew skills, I would go for repairs on the entire crew because getting tracked is just really bad in this vehicle because it hasn't got any armor. And you just really want to stay on the move and basically make it as hard as possible for your enemies to hit you. So get repairs on your entire crew. Brothers and Arms would be alright, but it's not really that important. I would definitely get stuff like off-road driving or clutch braking for your driver. Probably off-road driving would be really good. And snapshot and smooth ride would be very nice as well. And maximizing maximizing your view range by training recon and situational awareness would be really useful too. And on the commander, six cents obviously would be great. For the loader, um, uh, yeah, I would get safe storage as this tank hasn't got much armor and can't get ammo rack quite easily. Yep, so that's more or less it for the garage and I hope I've given you a good overview of the uh, stats of this tank and how to, how to maximize its efficiency. So let's head out to the battlefield and see how this tank performs out there. So here we go, this is our first game and I don't know what it is about me, the A43 and Lakeville, but somehow I always seem to perform really well with this tank on this map. And I'm using the 54mm uh, ZIS-4 gun at this point. And up till now I haven't used, um, or up to the point where I played this game, I hadn't used the 76mm uh, gun yet. And right here you can just get an idea of the great maneuverability of this tank. I'm using the speed to get into a good position, uh, to get some early spots off basically. Playing this more like a light tank, and I often play this like... I would play, say, a Chinese light tank as a kind of a scouting, brawling kind of uh, tank that tries to distract the enemies and kind of harass them. And um, you wouldn't say it's harass, isn't it? Well, um, never mind. Anyway, you, you, I hope you know what I mean. You kind of uh, try to distract them, pull their attention away from your allies, and then break contact again. And right here, you can see the kind of a downside of this gun, the kind of bad penetration. Like I bounced off the side of the KV-1. And yeah, but for example with the 76mm gun, I wouldn't be able to pull off these shots this quickly. And also I probably wouldn't be able to hit them. Um, because 
of the worst accuracy. Another thing about this tank is that the aiming time is actually worse than the reload with the 76mm, no, with the 54mm gun. And right here, you can just see me spamming the shots that BDR. So, this might be a reason why you would actually want to use the GLD on this vehicle because uh, you just do not, because you've got, if you're firing shots of this kind of range, you have to really make the choice if you want to uh, slow down your rate of fire by aiming all your shots completely or if you want to just pump out your shots over time and make some of them miss because you haven't aimed fully. So now I'm deciding to push forwards because I'm not getting any shots anymore. Then I encounter a Nashorn and he puts a shot into me. And the Nashorn is the kind of enemy you really want to engage because he's got no armor and that means your bar penetration doesn't matter. And you can just basically make all your shots count. And with the 76mm gun, I really would not be able to be as efficient on this position, just because I did, wouldn't have accuracy. And that's why I really prefer the 57mm. Now, if I was using the 76mm gun, I would have probably gone to the city, and I'm not sure how well I would have performed there, because this tank doesn't really excel in city maps all that much just because it's not very good at poking around corners and taking a shot just because its alpha damage is not high enough to do that and it's better at uh, open maps you know where it can circle enemies and basically f run around the place and just pump out the damage and engage enemies for a long time with its high dpm now you can of course also make this tank work on city maps by flanking around narrow streets and trying to get to the rear of your enemies or basically taking out the RT or something like that. By the way, something that I forgot to men it, me uh, mention is that this tank is also really good at uh, engaging scouts and basically taking them out before they reach your base. And I bounced off a hell of a Jackson there, which was quite unfortunate. But right here you can see the great wrath and uh, DPM of this vehicle. I'm taking some fire here, but I basically don't really care. I just want to kill this guy. That was very unfortunate there. But I take him out. Now I'm going to go for that ARL, but he's aiming at me. And he can basically one-shot me now. But I was really lucky I managed to take him out before he could kill me. And if I was, for example, using the 76mm gun in that situation, he would have maybe been able to take me out before I could have put him that last shot there. And this is just what this tank sells up. Chewing up lightly armored targets, like the Nashorn, like the ARL, or this vehicle here, the T-50. And I pick up my fourth kill, and I've basically... Uh, pushed single-handedly down this flank here more or less. I mean, I had some support, but uh, like the Hellcat was with me, but still, I really feel like I contributed quite a lot to this game. Now, there's the enemy RT. And, you know, as I said, I was really not expecting a lot of this tank. I was really expecting it to suck, because it's basically a T-34 bumped up a tier. Uh, but it really performs well, and I really had a lot of fun playing it. Right here you can see the limitations though, like for example I'm bouncing off the rear of the Tiger, which is quite poor actually, but I managed to take him out eventually, securing my last kill and then the RT sneaks a kill on me. <laughs> oh no, I, that, that little British artillery is so nasty, it's, you know, it can get on your nerves so much, it's such a funny little machine. <laughs> I really was not expecting that, I really have to give that RT player credit there because... <laughs> He just, <laughs> yeah, there, you see me going and shot, good shot, F.E., because I just really was totally not expecting him to do that, and that that really was n was poor play by me, to be honest, because I, I should have seen that coming, actually, but still, that was quite a nice game, I picked up five kills, and that's quickly check out how much damage we did. So here are the post-game stats of that game, and we got 33,412 credits and 2,780 experience, which was for our times 2 for the first victory of the day. Also, this game was uh, our second class mastery badge, which is the best I got in the A43, which I was quite disappointed about, uh, disappointed about really, because I had the feeling that I really did well in this vehicle, and I had lots of good games but I never had like a really amazing game that would have got me my ace tanker badge but I've had like something like 10 games probably with a second class mastery badge. 
in the team. I managed to deal out the most damage, and this was actually a tier 7 game. But we had a 300, we had 300 HP difference between the damage we dealt and the second best on the team. We also got the most kills by far, securing 5 frags. Um, and we got the most experience, getting 100 more than the KV1 who came after us. So that was really good. And if we look at the detailed report, we can see that we fired 46 shots, which is a lot. And 38 of those hit, which is actually quite good considering that we didn't wait to aim our shots fully and were firing them at very long ranges and 30 penetrated which is also quite nice and this is just what the 54mm gun can do on this tank it just pumps out those shots that quickly and although it only does 80 damage per shot it allowed us to deal out 1994 damage which is nearly 2000 in a tier 6 medium tank that's quite good we received 4 hits of which 3 penetrated so we were quite lucky there we received 985 potential damage and we detected 3 enemies, damaged 8 and destroyed 5 and also picked up 172 spotting damage which is not that much but you know. And also we managed to run quite a profit in that game and that's another great thing about this vehicle because it is, uh, because the ammunition is that cheap it's very very easy to farm credits with it and you can actually use it as a kind of a substitute premium tank if you cannot afford one or just do not want to spend money on the game because even without a premium account we would have gotten 15,000 credits and that wasn't actually that that wasn't even an amazing game so that's really nice and the repair costs are not that much like we lost nearly we actually lost all our health in that game and still we only had to pay 4,000 credits for the repairs and 2,500 for ammunition resupply, although we fired 46 shots. So, I hope that gave you a good impression of a 54mm gun, and now I'm just going to quickly show you a game with a 76mm gun, uh, just to give you an impression of that as well. And I warn you in advance that the game was not all that good, but it's the best I could do. So, yeah, let's see how it was. So, this is the game I promised on Mountain Pass. And uh, this is the best game I had in the A43 with a 76mm gun, and it was not very good, but it was the best I managed to do, and I was playing it quite a while with a 76mm gun, and I just could not make it work somehow. Right here you can get a good comparison between the speed of the A43 and the speed of the T34-85. As you can see, I'm able to leave the T34-85 behind me although it's still quite a fast tank and the difference is not that big but it can make kind of a difference in some situations and I just really like the agility and maneuverability and speed of this vehicle it's just really good so what you see me doing here is I'm going for this bush to get some early spots off and I was actually trying to hit that Jagdpanzer 4 there but I couldn't make it happen so instead I'm going to go for that Panzer 4, uh, Panzer 3 slash 4 who's aiming in the totally wrong direction and with a lucky roll, yeah there we go, I finish him off I actually wouldn't have needed a lucky roll there and that's the beauty of the 76mm gun but for example with the uh, uh, ZIS 4 gun I would have had to put two shots into that enemy before he went down there but uh, I managed to do it with one so that was nice and right here you can see me engaging a Yak Panzer 4 bouncing off the front quite a few times. If then I manage to torch him, uh, he uses a fire extinguisher, so that can we, uh, uh, that was a shame because that really showcases the bad penetration even on this gun, which is better than on the ZIS 4. Because I basically bounced three times off the front of a Yak Panzer 4 who well he has got good armor, but the armor's not that amazing. And right here I do a mistake. Because I drive out of the open and I basically took too much damage from that VK. And here I do a really stupid thing again, but I kind of get away with it. But I really shouldn't have risked that. Now I decide to try to snipe that VK 3001P there. And right here you will be able to see the kind of bad gun depression of this tank. Now I don't use sniper mode, which is a bit of a mistake. And now he starts aiming at me and I bounce off the VK, which is not a very heavily armoured vehicle. And yeah, that's just, I, I, it's basically my fault, but I'm not doing very well here. It's not the fault of the gun. And I aim for his turret again, but it's just a random nature of this gun here. Because with the ZIS-4, I would have probably been able to hit him and penetrate him a lot more accurately and more reliably. So now there's this VK 3001H ahead and I miscalculate the situation again because I drive out too far not noticing that there's a VK 3001P ahead as well. So I retreat again and decide to let the KV-1S and the KV-1 take the hits for me. 
and I think that one might have connected, but um, the SC100 took him out before I could get any damage in. And now I'm auto aiming at that VK3001H and firing a shot at him while I'm going into cover behind this rock. I'm on very low health here. My radio operator is dead, but I'm not really caring about that because I don't really need my radio range at this point. Uh, the VK3601H trapped me, but the KV1S just obliterates him. So now I'm going to go for the Yak Panzer IV, but I have to be careful because I know that there are snipers on the ridge at H8. Uh, uh, VK3001H to be more specific and that's why I can't really go around too far but I hope to still be able to take out that Jagdpanzer. I auto aim at him and now there's a Nashorn nice ahead and basically I just totally didn't realise that he would be there and he kills me but still I managed to pick up two kills and uh, I hope that game it wasn't good I'm not gonna say that and I did some really stupid mistakes in it it wasn't even an alright game it actually was really bad but it was the best I could do in the A43 with this gun and I hope it at least showcased the better alpha damage and better penetration for example when I was engaging that Jagd Panzer 4 and I was able to kill him at the end with one shot where it would have probably taken me uh, two shots most of the time if, if I hadn't been extremely lucky with this 4 gun. And yeah, as I said, this is the best I was able to do with the uh, 76mm and I think this result was really disappointing and it was my fault, I did some really stupid mistakes but somehow I don't seem to be doing these mistakes or maybe they just do not have as um, severe consequences for the result of the game if I'm using the 57mm gun and I just really feel that the 57mm gun has got that bit more flexibility that allows you to miss shots and just fire randomly and take blind shots just because the accuracy is that much better and it fires a lot quicker although the rate of fire is still good on the 100mm so I've got a last game lined up for you guys with a 57mm gun again and after that we'll have a summary so this is the last game I'm going to show you today and this was probably the best game I ever had in my A43. I spawned on Runeberg and I'm using the 57mm gun again. I'm heading out for the left side of the map because as I said this tank does not perform so well in city environments just because it has not got big alpha damage and it's just not good at popping around corners and taking a single shot. Now Runeberg is still quite a favourable environment because you don't need good gun depression in this map and it really favours good manoeuvrability. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to perform really well here. And as you can see I'm just really taking this M7 uh, apart and for example if I was using the uh, 76mm gun maybe I wouldn't have been able to kill him before maybe the Panzer 3 slash 4 took him out. So yeah that's a real uh, advantage with this gun. Now, actually in retrospect, what I should have done there is I should have gone for the front drive wheel of that Wolverine tracking him there and being able to basically kill him afterwards. But I didn't do it in the heat of the moment and it doesn't matter because the KV-1S just absolutely uh, obliterates him anyway. So now I'm going after that T-34-85 and I use auto-aim a lot actually uh, in this tank. I don't do it right here yet, but... Uh, actually, I find that uh, I use it a lot just because it's easier if you're, for example, circling an enemy. And right there, you could just see some really exemplary uh, A44 kind of tactic. That, for example, that T34-85 was focusing on my KV-1S pal. And while he was doing that, I managed to flank round and get him in his rear and just chew him up, chew him up with my really good wrath. Now, there's a Chino Kaiva, and that's if we, yes, we can hit him. And this is just where the good rate of fire and accuracy comes into play. Um, which the 76mm gun just really does not have. And here's artillery, so let's go in and see what we can do. And right here you can see me auto-aiming, which is quite useful. And we didn't get him, he's gone off our radar, but he's not dead yet. So there we go, drive by. <laughs> okay, so that's our fourth kill, and we've basically just ran over our enemies on this flank and they've got control of the city but the score is 65 and we're heading back in to clear them up. Now I'm going to go left because I really want to flank round and I don't want to be caught between two enemy uh, parties basically. Now the ARL44 gets a good shot into me 
<coughs> and we're not sure why he's hanging around there. Uh, so I keep moving after I've repaired my track, and that's where you really want to have repair skill on your crew in this tank here. Now I fail to finish him off, which is a shame, and I'm on only 3 HP now, which is really low health, so I have to be very careful, and I have to hope that ARL44 is going to poke against me, because I really do not want to poke against him, because, for example, I might bounce, and then he might kill me, but he's greedy for the kill, and I take him out when he comes around the corner. That was just really bad play by that ARL. He should have angled or side scraped around the corner or just waited to like uh, come round. And there's a T28 in the open. He's got a very accurate gun. He's actually got the same gun as I have at tier 4. Which is a bit ridiculous actually because yeah, the gun is actually quite underwhelming. I mean, it's ideal for the kind of gameplay, but when I first looked at the stats of this tank, I was just really disappointed. So I'm on 5 kills once again and... Now I'm just going to go to break the cap and kill that KV-1 there because I just don't want to have the pressure on me. But basically at this point the game is just in, in the bag really. And here you can see the bag penetration. I, I'm able to penetrate him most of the time. But still you can see my penetration marker going orange sometimes. And the artillery is going to demo. And basically everybody's crowding in to take out that KV-1 there. And I'm playing very riskily because I know that if I die at this point it doesn't really matter because we're going to win anyway. And, uh, oh... <laughs> Our own artillery team killed us now. That wasn't very nice of you. Uh, so I asked him why in chat, and <laughs> that I maybe it was a mistake, but I really don't think so. I mean, it didn't really matter because the game was won anyway, but that was not really necessary. Uh, anyway. We got our justice because the KV-1 ammo racked him just before he went down, so... Uh, yeah, he got his punishment for being an asshole, basically. But still, that was a really nice game, and we managed to pick up five kills and really uh, carry that game, basically. Or not, not carry it, but we really contributed to victory a lot there. So that's check out the post-game stats, and then... Uh, basically conclude this video. So we got 33,376 credits and 2,972 experience with our times 2 and that was once again the second class mastery badge. We finished best on the entire team picking up 991 experience and 5 kills and 1,796 damage which was also the highest damage score on the entire team by far. We fired 33 shots, um, hit 27 and penetrated 24, which is not as impressive as the last game, but it's still very nice. We dealt out 1,796 damage, which is a bit less than in the game on Lakeville, but again, it's really good. And this time we received quite a lot of potential damage, 1,345, uh, which means that we received 6 hits but only 5 penetrated and 1 didn't. And we also travelled 1,690 kilometres, so that was just an awkward way of saying 1.69, I'm sorry for that. Um, anyway, also we were able to run quite a big profit on that game and yeah, I hope that game just showcased once again uh, how this tank works and uh, just uh, flanking and outmaneuvering your enemies and just running around the battlefield and picking up kill after kill and in some games this tank just does not perform that well but if you come into a tier 8 game for example where you realistically won't be able to penetrate anything with your guns you can just use this tank as a scout and be very efficient with it and that's another reason why I prefer to use the 57mm gun over the 76ers because it weighs half as much and it gives your tank more maneuverability because it improves the power to weight ratio. Yeah, all in all, I didn't expect very much of this tank but uh, I was very pleasantly surprised and I really recommend it. And I'm not going to keep it because lately I haven't been having as much fun as in the beginning with this vehicle but still I can definitely recommend it. It was a joy to play in many games and I got some really good results and it just suits my playstyle perfectly so if you like outmaneuvering your enemies and just whizzing around the battlefield uh, then this will be the tank for you and I can really recommend checking it out. Also, if you're thinking about getting the Soviet medium tanks, I would go for this line, not for the T-34-85 line, because the tanks in this line generally are better, and you could argue that the T-34-85 is better than this tank, because it just gets a better gun, but for me, this tank was nicer because it's just more flexible, and 
the tier 7 and 8 tanks promise to be a lot better than the tanks in the other line. So I would definitely recommend getting this vehicle here. And it basically just plays like a pimped T-34. So if you enjoyed that tier 5 Soviet medium, you will like this tank. And uh, I hope I can give you a good overview of it. If I could, consider giving it a thumbs up below or even subbing to my channel. I would appreciate that a lot. And I hope I'll see you out there on the battlefield or in one of my next videos. See you then and bye bye.